Hey, how's it going guys? My name is Ninja Topifier and welcome to episode 55 of our Nomoria Let's Play. Now since the last episode there has been an update, it is 0.8.28 and um, this one has been basically a balance change in terms of how value works and what items get what sort of value. So there's like a really big um, change in the way that enemies will attack you um, based on your value and well I don't know it w I wouldn't really say that that's probably just not a, a very good way to put it but in summary um, decorative items are going to give you less value so if you decide to make your um, your place look nice if you decide to put statues everywhere to make your gnome sleep better um, it is going to not attract as many um, enemies as it used to because um, basically that's what the developer thought should happen um, and that's just the way it's going to be um, but it could again change um, for any reason that the developer or the community sees fit because that's just the way that this game has been going it has got a lot of updates um, that are really really amazing so yeah with that change to the aesthetic items basically like blocks and things like that um, you also get changes to the the military side and that being Means basically the armor and the weapons that you have actually generate more of a value so if I went into my kingdom right now I'd be able to see that my uh, I've got stock worth of um, 108,000 right there and my construction so basically any statues any any little pet rocks any walls any fancy stuff that I've built to make the place look nicer is actually contributing a hell of a lot less than it used to to my worth so um, basically it's shifting the worth over to military items so when you start out you're essentially going to get um, less nomads in the game at the start now because you won't have as many military items and you'll also probably get some um, less enemies maybe I don't know I haven't actually tested that in practice um, but we could assume that I guess and as you start to change um, your place and make it look nicer it really isn't gonna have a huge impact so you're not gonna get absolutely dwarfed by um, all these enemies coming in simply because you've just made your place look nicer um, it is basically when you when you assign more soldiers when you have more armor and weapons in your stocks or on your on your gnomes it is gonna um, yeah it's gonna bring in more enemies so it's going to basically scale the the difficulty as you get um, a stronger military which is really makes a lot of sense and I think it's probably going to be a better system than it was before so we're just gonna to have to go and see how this works out I've seen on the forums some people actually getting completely annihilated after this update as well um, I don't know what's gonna to happen to me um, honestly it's it's really could be anything it's really a toss of a coin but let's just go ahead and see what does happen it's also worth mentioning that there was an update to actually fix the bug that I, the issue that I was having, um, or the bug, whatever you want to call it, um, with the with the gnomes actually getting stuck on certain areas. It was to do with squads and stuff. There was a way to fix it. If you do have that problem still after the update, I've heard that um, going to your training grounds or basically seeing um, what squad it is that's affected, and and then going to the the either the training grounds or the patrol route or the guard area and going and unsigning them. So you basically unassign them. From from whatever they were on and then that should flush out basically their pathfinding or something like that and they'll go and, and, and they'll go and get unstuck and stuff and then you can reassign them so that should probably help people that still have that problem but again that was a fix in this update so you shouldn't be having those problems um, if you are a lucky person like me so with the last actual update that changed a lot of the crafting recipes um, cotton is again a lot more useful than it used to be as well if we go into our tailor we can see that there's actually a padding option now you need um, fibers which is basically cotton or wool and then you also need a bolt of cloth and then you also need um, string to make padding. Now padding goes in all of your armors. I'm pretty sure every single piece of armor, maybe not leather, actually it'd be interesting to see if leather actually needs. Um, I guess that's the kitchen, the leather worker was this one right here. Um, yeah, you actually do need padding for every single type of um, armor that you do get. So it's uh, cotton is a lot more useful, and um, in fact, I better just check up on the stocks and see if I um, need to increase the size of the farm. So if we go into our, our cloth here, we can see we've got 186 fiber. That gets turned into bolts of cloth, I believe, and then that can get turned into the rest of the items. So I think I'm okay, but I definitely have to add... Um, the crafting recipe for padding um, to actually get done. So we've got 45 bandages, 20 string to get made, 
Um, and we've also got, we need, so bolts of cloth are actually made in my loom here. So bolts of cloth are getting up, done up to about 22. I'm going to probably raise that to about 25 just to um, give it a little bit more because it is used for so many more things. And then we're going to go ahead and make padding. Um, it doesn't matter which fiber it is for me or which string and it doesn't matter which bolt, whether it's wool or cotton. Um, cotton is obviously grown and wool is obviously shaved um, off of, I believe, alpacas and stuff like that. Um, so we'll go ahead and make that padding and then we will just go ahead and craft that to about 20. I think 20 should be a decent number. So once the bandages are made um, and then the string is made and the, the padding will be made, I think maybe string should be ahead of padding. Um, but you do need string for padding. Actually, I'm gonna move, yeah, I'm gonna move padding up um, so string gets done last um, because then they'll be able to alternate between padding and string and then it'll probably get done a little bit nicer than before. So on the military side of things, um, a while ago I did try and change things up um, with, my, with my squads and basically when they would respond to a military threat. So if we went into our squads, um, we can see we've got um, the Butcher Shadows, Workers 1, Moon Colors of Gold, Ripe Slugs, and the Spine Grinders, and obviously the rest of the Worker um, squads, which aren't really important for what we're doing right now. So we have we have our one formation, which is used in... Um, okay, so we've got one and one no attack orders. So the thing is, um, this is essentially um, sort of pointless now because I'm going to just change these. So one is um, defending the gnomes, performing attack orders, but not avoiding the enemy. So any gnome that, that sees an enemy, all of the military will rush to that enemy and try to defend gnomes um, instantly. I don't have to attack on them, but attacking will um, obviously just in enforce that, I, I guess, if it doesn't actually happen for whatever reason. So two no attack orders, we're actually going to go ahead um, and just remove that. We're just going to leave it... You know what, squads, I just need to find out which squad actually uses two. Switch them over to one, so the ripe slugs uses ranged. The Spine Grinders uses one, and the Butchered Shadows uses one, so like, they all... They all actually use one, so... Um, they haven't been defending gnomes so far, so we can go ahead and get rid of two. Um, it's just a meaningless thing at the moment. So yeah, basically everything's going to stay the same except for defending the gnomes. We're going back to doing that. Um, I sort of figured I'd split the army in half um, a while ago and say, okay, you guys, you will defend any gnomes that are in trouble. So if we get snuck up upon, you know, um, down in the mines or something, whilst also getting attacked at the front, um, I can do attack orders on some and I can get the other guys going to there. So it's not everyone rushing to um, one battle. So I can sort of split the and split the um split the enemies up into different groups and defeat them that way but that isn't really not the way that it works um because they don't tend to actually spawn at the same times. Like generally you get goblins and then you might get a clay golem um, shortly after, but um, really it's not too much of a problem um, at the same time. So it's basically a um, a needless thing. We can see we do have this squad right here um, and like the nomad um, who is actually in this squad. So the spine grinders, um, for some reason it looks like there's only actually one person in there. Let's go ahead and look the spine grinders. Okay, so Anzalak is actually the only person that is um, in this squad. I'm not sure what happened to everyone else in this squad. Did they did they die or did they get um, somehow un unassigned during one of the updates that um, might have broken a couple of things? We can see down in the mines we are, um, again, doing a lot of stuff, um, trying to get some more resources out here, like with this... It's wonderful emerald. Um, I love emeralds. Everyone's got to love emeralds just a little bit because that is the way that um, uh, people work, I think. So, yeah, we're just getting stuff done down here and in a lot more. Um, it's it's definitely a slower fashion um, because look at this. Like, this entire square here could have been spread out along, like, so many corridors. But that is um, much more dangerous in terms of um, when enemies get spotted, how they get dealt with, and whether or not um, people can, the miners can actually escape from them um, is a totally different issue so lighting is um, really not a problem when I actually do this method um, which is a lot um, it's a lot safer even if it is a little bit less efficient in finding things um, just the way that has to be we can see we've got three miners working solidly down here there's definitely some blood sweat and tears going on um, but I think they can get through it eventually because they do have their leather armor it does have ventilation holes and um, I think generally the the cool does cool no cool doesn't well underground actually is colder than 
than above ground. So these guys might actually be cooler than, um, say, the guys that are working at the top on the farms, getting getting beaten by the sun. Um, as for the the, the one-man squad that's actually sitting down here, I'm still only getting like clay and um, clay and dirt golems. So there is a there is a um, occasional skeleton and maybe a zombie, but zombies really haven't been coming recently, which is a really nice thing because they can be a definite pain in the ass when they start infecting everyone else. And then you get just a lot more zombies that are being crazy. Um, these guys aren't wearing armor. No idea why. Um, I honestly should have them set to... So they're the two two-handed guys with the axes. Go over to our military and check on the positions. We'll be able to see um, the two-handers. Um, we, we actually need to go to uniforms and just skip that. We go to two-handers. They should be wearing anything, and and we saw this um, last episode. Their perk is knock them down, so there really isn't um, there really isn't any reason apart from being bugged out. I think I could try and fix this by going to these training grounds, the Moon Callers of Gold. We're actually going to unassign this, um, and then just play the game for a little bit. So they're unassigned, and that's going to flush that out. And then we can go ahead and reassign the Moon Callers of Gold to that. Maybe um, the two-handed guy will go pick up. Um, some armor after he does that um, little drink run that he's actually going to do. So the Butcher Shadows will do this for this as well. We'll go ahead and just let that sort of refresh the system and then just replace it again with the Butcher Shadows. So that may or may not work, I'm not totally sure. Um, but yeah, they just seem to be coming back and um, doing their thing. I guess it, we haven't really been having too many problems with um, soldiers actually dying. It's basically people that get caught off guard. So maybe the two-handers enjoy being um, sort of free of their armor. See the grass is growing um, basically the same as it was before. I'm going to go ahead and just quickly go to um, build, go to our terrain and actually make a floor. This is definitely going to have to be some dirt. And we're going to place and, and basically replace what we cut out there in the hopes. We basically cut this out if you didn't know in the hopes that the, the grass would start spreading out from it um, in different directions. That's not exactly how it happened at all. It's pretty much just continued the way that it wanted to. The grass is actually growing really slowly and I'm kind of, um, I don't know how I feel about that. Like it feels like it's been far too long, but again, maybe it hasn't because I do, too, <laughs> I do talk a lot um, and I do get distracted by so many things that sometimes the game just isn't being played. We are in the 10th day of fall in year two, so it's not like a huge gigantic amount of time um, in game has happened. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and assume that is basically just normal growth, grass growth um, and then I shouldn't uh, worry too much about it because if you start worrying too much about your grass growth then uh, you might not you know, might not be having that much fun in your life you know when you sort of sit back and say so grass growth is the thing that really just just makes me angry and doesn't makes me unfulfilled in my life but again you could sort of flip that and say well if you know grass growth is the only thing that's you know like annoying me in my life then surely I've got a really good life because I've got all these other things to worry about I don't really know which way you want to take that um, you could put a definite weird spin on that either way because um, that's just the way that some things that I say happen because I really don't know but that's just the way it is. So we can see we've got some trap bases here. We've actually got two trap bases and also some um, two spikes, copper spikes. So we can go ahead and put that together, not in the tinker bench, we actually do it in the engineer shop. Yeah, the spike trap. So we're going to go ahead Oh, well, we actually need, um, okay, so now you need a one trap base and three spikes simply to make one. So we're going to have to go ahead and craft, um, a few more spikes, but I'll just go ahead and craft one more spike simply because we don't have that many bars, um, uh, for whatever reason, they just aren't getting smelted. Maybe I could get another blacksmith actually rolling because if we check up on our stocks, we should be able to see that in the metal, we've got lots of ore and only four bars. So maybe... I don't think I need another forge, I think I simply just need a blacksmith that actually um, does work on it quite consistently. Alright, so in the forge, which is the thing that obviously smelts our ores into our bars, um, I'm going to put the priority up to two. And that's basically going to be so that that um, just gets done before some of the other things, because it really doesn't seem... Um, 
I don't know, it just doesn't seem right to not have bars being co created constantly when you have so many ores actually sitting in your stockpiles, you know. And the military really needs to just continue um, advancing and developing um, the strength of what um, it wears and what it battles with. Um, we can see someone actually has a crossbow here. Wait, that's not a crossbow, that's actually simply a pick. I can't believe I thought that was a crossbow, but I guess they look a little bit similar if we have a look at the crossbow there. Um, so yeah, basically we are getting um, some drinks made constantly. We can see someone is actually moving in here with strawberries and stuff like that. And there is actually um, some strawberry wine sitting here. So we do have a solid five drink. I mean, I know that isn't a whole lot and it's just gone up to six. It's probably going to get drunk very, very shortly. Um, and it seems that people still are heading to the wells to actually grab a drink. Um, pretty much everyone is. So, I don't know, we, we do have, you know, drinks available to people, and it appears it's all wine at the moment. So I guess I can't really, I don't know if I wanted to switch B, I'll just move B up at the moment, and then see if he wants to come over and grab some wheat. I wonder if he's actually going to go out into the farms, because that'd be interesting to see um, whether the farm is actually closer to him in his mind, or it's actually, so yeah, he's, he's actually coming out to the farm, I guess because he thinks I better bring this in, why the hell not, um, as opposed to using it from the stockpiles that are right here, which are, should be, like, have a lot. Um, actually, I don't think this has any. I think that's a little bit of a problem there. What is this stockpile actually set to with priority? It's set to priority 3, so I don't need to bump it up. I just need um, to basically wait for the haulers to actually um, get to that. We can see that um, a lot of these walls are still getting... Um, still getting replaced. Um, it's not going that quickly because we do have um, the castle area still being um, sort of constructed. I'm going to go ahead and actually... Um, just create a, a little torch up here because it's a little bit dark up here and I wouldn't want people um, to get into some danger when they don't really have to. This place is completely blocked off from all enemies um, which is really really nice. If we go here we can see that that is totally inaccessible um, by anyone that wanted to invade us. But yeah, builders are basically, they got their work cut out for them. They're doing a hell of a lot of stuff um, in terms of building stuff and constantly making things. We can see that our, our pine trees are finally getting planted. We're almost at full capacity again with our, um, with our trees, so that's really good. Except for the birch, I think these are birch. Um, yeah, this is birch, so they're not too much of a worry. Um, I actually do have them on a lower priority than the pine that is on three, and we can see the pine is on... Wait, the pine is on three as well? Um, I thought it was supposed to be different, but I guess it doesn't really matter. A two-headed ogre has been spotted. When did they add a two-headed ogre? When? What? what? <laughs> um, okay, so I must have sort of missed when they added two-headed ogres. Uh, he's going through the traps, and he looks very dangerous. Let's. Oh, my copper armor plate. Look at all this stuff he's got on him. Oh, that's actually... No, that's stuff that's broken off of um, either him or people before him. So let's go ahead and click on Two-Headed Ogre. He's from the Land of Frames. That goddamn Land of Frames. We can see he's bleeding from his lower body and his left leg. So that is decent. We are, um, we've got him bleeding already. Um, and we can see, whoa, a goblin has been spotted behind him. We can see the traps are getting activated right there. Um, it might actually be a better idea to mm, sort of like let them go through the the rest of these traps instead of auto attacking but i guess they were going to do that anyway whether or not i oh my god what is that what is that wearing steel steel is blue i had no idea what's steel is blue that is that's just the ultimate of badass and i'm actually quite worried what what is going to happen here because a fully steel enemy i mean there's a lot of guns being spotted i'm i'm hitting against the ogre's head um, but his haircut is sort of making it difficult to actually do that. The goblin has died, so we've got a goblin, one goblin dead. And we're basically just in battle constantly. We've got some... Um, the archers, I'm going to go ahead and make sure that um, they actually have um, Yak Quiver. And it has got um, 2 out of 16 bolts. I just want to quickly check up on the items and make sure to do weapons range. So we've got 120 bolts. We're absolutely fine with bolts. That's um, more than enough for like probably two, two battles. Um, two really long battles. So the goblin has died another one. The, go the ogre still hasn't died. Um, I'm, there, there we go, another goblin has died. I mean a goblin. And honestly, I don't, I really don't know what's happening here because oh, they seem to be possibly retreating a tiny little bit, but no armor has actually broken off of this goblin. Um, we can see now the golem is actually trying to 
trying to take a stance. He's trying to, he's trying to, you know, trying to make his name in the world of, of danger. I'm gonna go ahead and make sure. Yeah, we got. Well, we have everyone. Look at all these nomads, um, actually sitting here. From down, Hose the soldier, Anzalak, um, mass murder montage, Dan Lick, and obviously the two-headed ogre and stuff like that. There probably is some blood from um, our gnomes after a battle this long with so many enemies. I definitely expect um, some casualties, no matter how saddening thought may be. We can see a lady just ran in there. I don't even think she had a weapon. Um, and people are basically trying to, for some reason people are running out there. Um, so look at them, they're just sort of dancing around. These, oh shit, Dan Lick has died? Why? Well, I guess there's a freaking goblin in this sort of armor. I'm going to go ahead and click on the goblin soldier, click on attack on him. Um, that might stuff up priorities, but I think they were attacking the goblin anyway. Um, I th I don't know if I don't know if that was the right decision, honestly. But we're just gonna have to wait and see. I kind of wish I could retreat back and let some of these traps do a bit more damage. But this is going on. This is crazy. I feel like I should assign someone else that's that's like jumping around. Okay, so this guy, um, Zeke, do you actually have? Um, anything. Yeah, we got 16 out of 16, so he's just refreshed um, his quiver. So he's doing um, constant damage to these ogres. I think um, the ogre's hand or his arm fell off. It looks like maybe that's... I don't know if that's the regular graphic, but it kind of looks like his arm did fall off. Still no armor coming off of this steel goblin. I think it's just one goblin actually sitting there now with the golem. Okay, so the... Where they're doing some strange dance. The two-headed ogre has died. A bronze hand axe has become legendary. Is it this one? Is it Anzalak? Did you just make a legendary um, iron hand axe? Poorly crafted. It doesn't say legendary. I guess that's a bit of a shame. Um, but definitely someone else has a legendary hand axe. That means it's got enough kills to become really... Look, we're pushing him out. We're driving him out. It was the ogre that was, you know, pulling us back. Oh my god. Okay, we're getting him out the front door. We do have... Oh, sh Hose has bled to death. Okay. We are still fighting the goblin. Who else's blood is here? I think it was just Hose. So that's two... Oh my god. That's two soldiers down. And we still don't have any armor broken off of this, golem, this goblin. Okay, so definitely getting some ranged attacks going. And he's basically sort of retreating back. I don't know if that's... That means I'm winning. Frodo has passed out from exhaustion. Vinny um, is actually bleeding. Um, and Frodo is sort of just sitting there. Whoa! I thought... Oh my god, I thought the goblin had died, but it's, he didn't die. Okay, so there's four people still... Wait, three people still fighting this guy. It is going to take all of my military to actually get rid of this guy. Um, I don't even know if the goblin is bleeding yet. I think it was. Um, but this all looks like Vinny's blood. Let's go ahead and just let it play out. You can see the the archers definitely getting their fair share of bullets or bolts into the into the steel clad golem. He's like goblin is actually pushing back into back into the is he going to the entrance? What is he doing? I think he's sort of getting possibly overwhelmed. I don't know, people are going back for drinks and stuff. This is this has to be the longest battle I've ever seen. This is this is almost ridiculous, like, I could, I could go have a sleep. Maybe the goblin, maybe the golems, I'm getting my words so mixed up. Um, oh my god. Dan Lick has risen from the dead. Zombie Dan Lick. He was infected? When was he infected? My, oh, he must have gotten bitten ages ago when I was fighting those zombies. Um, let's see what direction he, okay, so they're definitely gonna, oh, that just thins out the the military. Okay, so we're surrounding him and we're still fighting the goblin. So there's definitely two battles going on. Who is... So there's a lot of people here um, on the... There we go. That steel has actually broken. Zombie Dan Lick has died. That is wonderful. The goblin has died. And here we can see our first pieces of steel, steel armor. That is... That is just a beautiful color, isn't it? Look at that. That's just... Oh my god. We deserved that. We lost like three people, didn't we? Um, if we go to events and go to combat, um, 11th day. So this group fight... We'd see that people were just... 
Um, smashing the steel breastplates, smashing the steel pauldrons. God, there was so much stuff happening that um, it is just too much to even read. This is crazy. Bashes, but the goblin dodges the attack. That goblin was very, very well versed in his in his combat tactics. Um, Frodo passes out from exhaustion. He actually just got to... Oh my, this blood. Okay, so we do have... Um, we have got Walter Watson actually in bed right now. And I assume the the Vinny... Vinny? Is he, has he gotten himself to... He might have just been bleeding um, a little bit. So he might not need actually the hospital to, to get him to get him back into fighting spirits, but there we can see that we've got some some awesome gear on Odd Limo there. He has got steel boots, steel greaves, steel gauntlets, um, one steel pauldron, the other one was actually broken, and a steel helmet, so that's definitely an upgrade. Um, so the next time we actually get um, fought by um, a steel goblin or anything, we are going to have a hell of a lot um, better chance at actually getting that guy down quicker without casualties. I'm going to have to go ahead and go to build, go to our furniture, actually make these doors. Um, go ahead and make it out of stone, doesn't matter which stone these ones are. Let's go ahead and replace all of them. Actually, is this... was that where the door was? I can't actually remember. But I'm going to go ahead and make a door like here and here just to... Um, just to slow the progress of the enemies that actually come in. That is going to go ahead and do it. That was a huge battle. I am... I'm at a loss for words at what I think about that. Um, I'm definitely happy that we didn't... The whole kingdom didn't fall because that was definitely a possibility. Um, some people did have issues like that after the latest patch. Um, Walter... Oh my god, just as I finish... Oh my god, Walter Watson actually bled to death. Um... Where is our caretaker? Uh, if we go to our population, we can actually see um, who the caretaker was, I believe. No, we can't because I made them all custom nomads. Oh god. Um, maybe it was this guy, Captain Jeppy the Engineer. Why isn't he actually working? I don't really know why he's not working, but yeah, that is going to do it for episode 55. I want to thank everyone so much for watching. Um, we will get through the tough times that are ahead of us. Because that is just what we do as gnomes and um, as really good people. So my name is Ninja Topify and I'll see you in another video.